Yep, yep. Let's get weird. Let's let's fucking roll. <laughs> let's get weird. Let's fucking roll. I I said it better myself. Okay. <laughs> Right, with that, why let's just go straight into it. Welcome everybody. <laughs> we'll start the recording right here. Um welcome to Grigos Liberados episode two, 2024 edition. I guess we can call it season two, episode two. That's how we've been labeling it, right? My name is Trajan, once again, blessed to be back uh for two in a row, as is RMC, but now we've got four Y4. We have uh it's stuck with me. <laughs> yes, I uh couldn't handle more than one Brit on one show. There's only room for one in this town, so the new dude has been relegated for the time being. Um, right, CPL week one. We've already we're breaking records. We're already doing things that have never been done before. You know, you know how we do it down here. We had ten wins on blue side. Everyone's one and one, yep. conclusive as always. Good job, Brazil. Thank you very much. Um, Let's talk about... The table is back in alphabetical order. Yes, <laughs> as in its true form, as all most base tables are, simply alphabetical. Let's, uh, I guess let's let's address that 10-way that tie first, okay? Um, because RMC, I think this is a bit of a bait, right? It's like a 10-way tie, it's 10 for blue side. How, how, how realistic is this? Are we, are we, is this just a fancy coincidence or is there something to be said for this? So I just want to point out on LOL Esports, it is not alphabetical for my four. So Liberty not? is in no Liberty's in tenth what? place. <laughs> and Furious wow. in first place, I guess. They, Liberty still <laughs> ends on. up in tenth after all this. Wow. He, 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 they can't just give Liberty a break for one split. <laughs> I, I think that's where you say, is that a coincidence? Uh, or is there something? Yeah. Like that? Uh did, did the script that's get hilarious. leaked? That's really funny. Yeah, I'm that's I'm brutal. just on Lolpedia and here here it is alphabetical. Yep. Uh, but on LOL Esports I get that. That's funny. Yeah. No, they're, they're making Lopedia claims. Lopedia is doing it right. They're making uh, <laughs> making assumptions over there at LOL, Lol Esports. Um, right. Really they didn't even have Lout number one on LOL Esports. Disappointed. Okay, so is yes, 10-way tie. Are we being lied to? No, I think we're being lied to. I mean, in the first place, CB LOL early weeks are always chaotic and crazy. <laughs> right? Like, Loud yeah. is rarely on top, and yet they always end up on top at the end. But I do think it's interesting and it's fun. And I'm actually really happy that we did sort of get this 10-way tie. Not super happy got tied to sort of the blue wave of just blue side winning every single game. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think it's really fun. And I think it's really going to mess people who are betting up as well. Because the odds are going to be all over the place now. <laughs> um, yep. And that's gonna they're going to deserve it. That's fun. But yeah. I think things will shake out. Week two is going to be interesting for me because I think week two will still see a lot of chaos. I don't think teams mm. have figured out what they want to do, um, how they want to do it, or necessarily how they want to play, at least from watching day one or day two. Mm -hmm. um, teams were wildly inconsistent. Yeah, I, I think for me, there's only one team that I think actually looks better than all the other ones. Maybe two, maybe two, but there's one I think that actually looks better than the rest, and that's Red Canids. Ooh. Because I think that they lost to INTZ, right? But if you look at that mm -hmm. game, I don't know if I've seen Yampi play a better game of League of Legends. And Ninja Kiwi was also... The, I think this was a massive overperformance for Yampi and Ninja Kiwi, who were having a <laughs> blinder of a day that day. The rest of the team yep. is still kind of getting dragged along by their heels. But they had an amazing day. And even then, Red almost brought it back. They didn't just get washed out. They didn't just get run over by INTZ's Bopanov. They almost brought it all the way back. They were back ahead in gold. They got like three Barons or something. And it ended up being a classic Brazilian mess which INTZ ended up coming out on top of. And I think that Red showed me, unlike anyone else really, that they can still like, we're not just going to fall over and die. We're super good. And yeah, we, we blundered a bit early on, but we're still really good and we can make a comeback. And I don't think I saw anyone else really even show me that in week, in week yeah. one anyway. So that's why I have I a little bit more faith in Red still. And I think that's the second longest game this, like globally. Uh, this already, so, already. That I had a boy. I think We're so. Getting there. The, the get only the reason I know that two. had a longer game was PCS. They had like a fifty-plus minute game. Wow. But beyond that, I think fifty-six, uh, forty-six, fifty-six, which is ITZ versus Red Cannons, is probably the second longest game. Yeah. Game's too fast, BTW. Yeah, literally. Bit, yeah. You know, <laughs> this time to kill is way too low. That's what Freak said, right? It's all everyone's dying yeah. too fast. That's that's the problem. Uh, four oh four. How do you feel about this this ten way tie? Do you think that anyone else did acquit themselves, or do you think we are just kind of we're all starting our engine still and we don't really know what's going on? Um, I mean, I think I think I, I think both are true. I think we are just kind of all figuring things out. Um, like I think for example, a team that has still left me very confused, and I I think I'm less certain about them than I was at the beginning, 
is Fluxu because they mm -hmm. looked good in that win over Furia. And then Furia, yes, against Liberty, and, you know, we don't really know what to think of them either. Um, they, you know, they popped off. IU went back to being IU and Zai. But again, remember, you want to talk about <laughs> overreactions from week one that we mm -hmm. fell victim to last year. Um, I This thumbnail will always stick in my head, right? It's the, like, it was it was IU Photoshop next to the, the CB LOL trophy. And the, um, the the caption in the thumbnail was, et tasa papai, which means like, like we won already, right? We won. Like, literally, yeah. um, it's the trophy daddy, um, <laughs> which I love direct translations like that. Um, Jesus. But I think I think two teams that for me did acquit themselves very well, um, for me, were Kaboom. And I'll say that because I, I think that's a little more personal that mm -hmm. I, I think, underestimated Kaboom. I underestimated how mm -hmm. quickly Cabby and C's would integrate. I think yeah. they looked... I haven't gone back and watched the mic check, and I meant to do that. Um, or at least, well, I did watch the mic check, but only Red Canid's mic check because I was looking for the clip where <laughs> yeah. um, Bruncey got up and called Titan his son. Which yeah. I thought was hilarious. <laughs> you know? um, yeah. And I did find that, but I did not find Kaboom's uh, mic check yet. So I want to go back and look at their comms, but I was impressed with Cabby and C's. Uh, C's especially because Cabby came in very highly regarded. So I was like, okay, yeah, he's kind of up to snuff. C's, um, I don't know, maybe I'm just, um, uh, there, there was too much, um, too much scary in my life, right? Too much, just, um, <laughs> Too much uh, lava, or not lava, uh, um, trick. Too trick. much trick in my life. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I was a little traumatized there. And I think an honorable mention for that, teams that looked better than I thought and quitted themselves well, yes, they blundered that game against Liberty, but INTZ, I thought they looked really, really good. I thought, like you said, Yampi and Ninja Kiwi especially, they're the guys that right now are going to have to take that step up and be kind of on the front foot, right? Mm -hmm. Tay is always going to be kind of your your rock in the top lane. I, I hate that cliche, but that really does feel like the role he kind of plays in all this. Mid lane is going to be a question mark for a while, right? Who knows if Namiru will sub in eventually, right? I thought it looked okay. Mm -hmm. uh, damage as reliable as they get, but it's going to have to be Yampi and Ninja Kiwi. Yampi calling the shots, being the puppet master, and Ninja Kiwi stepping up and continuing to, sh continuing to show more and more the, the killer instinct that we saw towards the end of last year, right? They lost that playoff series 3-1 to Red, but that game two that they won, was some of the most electric League of Legends that I saw in Brazil. I was casting yeah. that series. I had yeah. so much fun so good. casting that series. It was a yeah. blast. Um, and yeah, I mean, and, and even that game they lost against Liberty, like, look, it was, it's a results-based business, and they should be dinged for just puking on themselves 40 minutes <laughs> into that game. But it was great up until then. Yeah, I think Liberty as well. Like, th there was a lot of active good stuff coming out of Liberty in that game in the later stages, which is nice. It wasn't just... There, there was a little of, of self-puking and there was a little bit of Good League of Legends coming out of Liberty. So, you know, we had a bit of something for everybody. But yeah, Los Grandes is one that that does... That I was was pleasantly surprised by. Um, especially in game two. I yep. really liked what Season Cabby were doing. I've always had a soft spot for, for Cello. I know you are, MC. I know you're, you're, you're a Cello enjoyer. Yep um now with me um and super clever especially as well you were hyping him up and super clever had a banger week one for sure um i think he had a very solid start uh in the top lane coming out of um coming out of academy and an envy was you know he was also there so i think that los grandes just like <laughs> they, they had a, a better start than i expected you know they're one and one which is i'm i was i'd put them at eighth or something right i'd power rank them eighth and I think yeah. that that was, and now I'm thinking maybe, maybe if INTZ keeps being a bit, you know, if we, those solo lanes don't tighten up a bit, if Furia doesn't really get organized, we, we could see uh, a run into 5th, 6th, 7th for, for Los Grandes, I think, before too long. So I definitely felt good about them. Yeah. Also, I'm not realizing, I think I said Kaboom earlier when I meant Los Grandes. I hope yes. that kind of came across. Um, yeah. There's the, the other orange team. I share the sentiments that Trajan said, and I was like, wait yeah. a minute, did I? Because like, it would have been reasonable to, to be not convinced by Kaboom as well, to be clear. like There was plenty of reasons to not yeah. be fully convinced yeah. by Kaboom. And after week one, yeah. there's still some reasons not to be fully convinced by Kaboom, I think. But once again, their game two was like, oh, okay, I, this is like the point, right? This was like the, the, the yeah. thesis yeah, that me, we had coming Kaboom's in. Kaboom's like, Look, you know? jury's still out, right? You you beat VKS, who I think are probably, again, going to be a bit of a benchmark team, a bit of a, you know, you must be this tall to make playoffs. They're going to be kind yeah. of that sixth place gatekeeper. I, how I, I feel think about the ceiling VKS, is honestly. I'm very confused by I, VKS. Again, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, then, but, and then it's like, okay, kaboom, you got you got rinsed by Loud in game one. Mm. Okay, fine. It's, Loud it's happens to the like best of kinda, us. Like, <laughs> yeah, it happens to yeah. literally <laughs> everyone, everyone by Loud. <laughs> for the past <laughs> two years of Brazilian League of Legends. Yeah. And then you beat VKS. Great job. Yeah. And, and I think for Kaboom, there's a lot to be said for them, even when they got rinsed by Loud. Like, it's not, I, there's no player I'm looking at going, oh, this guy messed up, you know, mm. and then yeah. performed poorly. They just got outhanced by. Yeah, that, that was more about Loud than it was for Kaboom. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
and, and likewise, I think for the the loud pain game as well, there's a lot to be said about loud, wow. and in fact, probably more than pain in that particular mm -hmm. game, yeah. and how they perform, right? Like, I think they they refused the post game interview uh, loud as a team. Yeah. Nobody wanted to do a post game interview. And yeah, I don't blame them because honestly, watching that game. As a pain fan, I felt frustrated watching Loud lose that game because it was just like, <laughs> how, bro? Like, yeah. I, you, just, you, were like, you were like, come on, look, I like beating Loud as much as the next pain fan, but put but up like, a fight. Come on, man. Like, Why? It's not fun anymore. Like it's this. not fun like this. <laughs> fun pain, pain doesn't take handouts, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do we want to talk about Loud a little bit? Because I think Loud was uh, a, a huge surprise to me. Both mm -hmm. days, day one, they did not look hungover. Ridbert looked amazing. The whole team was a Yeah, point. it was clean. Day two looked like what I thought it looked like on day one. <laughs> that was the hangover day, bro. Yeah, we had the 06 Robo Power sort of classic or whatever, right? We had the absolute yeah. dis dis dismantling of Wiser, or of Robo by Wiser, which we've come to to expect. I think that's how last split opened, right? Was was Wiser just absolutely rinsing Robo, and then Payne just like walked over loud in that first game one. So I think, uh, yeah, they, 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 they switched the order up a bit, but we did still see the patterns that we've come to know and love. Um, yeah, I thought Ridbird looked good though. E even yes. in the loss, Ridbird to me probably looked second best in that team. I'd say Tin Owens probably looked best, um, mm. but Tin Owens is just rock solid. That guy, incredible mm. skill floor. Um, but Ridbird, mm. yeah, I'm, I'm really happy that mm. Ridbird seems to be doing well on this loud roster, integrating yeah. really quickly. Yeah. Oh my god, I, I was so happy. I can't. I couldn't believe when That's I like. Fine. I think I made <laughs> yeah, my little. Man. Yeah. Ah, oh, so happy. I just he, to protect back. it. Because yep. he was, he was. <laughs> I'll never forget. There, there was an interview he did. As I think they got him on, like on, on the you know the analyst desk or whatever. After like one of the three thousand losses he had last year on mm -hmm. Kaboom, <laughs> and he was like, someone asked like, is someone like, how, how are you feeling? And he just kind of looked up at the interview. He was like, like, how do you think I'm feeling? <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> what do you want him to say? <laughs> like exactly, it was so sad. <laughs> and I, I put him like f I think fourth in like my t my beginning of season tier list as far as supports. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised I had even one. Like from look, the Brazilian fans they've got a longer memory than me, right? They know they'll be able to pull things out. They're like, what about this, this, and this? And I'd be like, oh shoot, okay, fine, fair enough. Like I watched the league for a while, but I forgot about this. And I was surprised I got even one that was like, are you kidding me? Redbert was horrible last year. I'm like, really? Like I I'm mm -hmm. surprised that even one of you said that because I'm like. This guy was a CBL champion in 2020. This guy he was, was part of with that roster. No, he was part of the Flamengo regular season monster rosters, right? He was part of yeah. Super Furia. Like yeah. this guy has been a consistently high floor support for a mm -hmm. long, long time. Get him on a good team. You're gonna see what this dude's capable of. He was not. He was. He was mentally checked out after like week three last year. Yeah, that's like I mean, a lot of. To be fair, he had like flawless <laughs> as a jungler for like part of yeah. it. Yeah, and flawless was anything but. And then yeah. they, I, I was happy when they brought in Scary, but then they also had Samka's play as well. So he was playing like a rotating sort wow, of jungle yeah, position. Raven didn't really start popping off till like second half of the split where Kaisa mm -hmm. became his bread and butter. And then he got the pentakill and he actually I'm... started looking like the ADK remember from Academy. So like and they were doing on crash that roster, mid, I... right? They were like putting yeah. crash back into mid and we were like, why? Oh, why crash he... was fine, bro. Crash was, was like, fine. <laughs> <was> the problem. <laughs> he won v three mid. He he was fine. fine. Uh huh. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, so yeah. so Redbird certainly uh, has earned some respect once again. I think after week one, uh, we might still we might not have to to forego the Root Seos Foundation. We've just replaced it with a with a Root Redbird Foundation, which doesn't seem to be a big loss yeah. for Loud, which is important. Mm -hmm. Robo is still <laughs> Robo. This is still the case. Croc is still Croc. Uh, but Tinones, I think, did have a hot start as well, uh, hotter than usual, because even he's had his slow games in the early parts of Split. So, but he came in uh look, looking like he was going to put the carry pants on from from gay one so loud i think are going to be quicker off the starting block in general we'll have to watch out for that in the next couple of weeks uh the only other team that i really want to touch on uh, and then i'll pass back to you guys for anything else is to dive a little bit more into intz because mm -hmm. as i said i feel like yampi and Ijikiwi had an insane blinder of a week one yampi particularly especially in that second game the rail engages were crazy he was controlling like every objective he did rail and brand a lot of variety there and I think that I just, I can come into this game and I'm looking at like INTZ VKS this week, this coming week. And I'm thinking mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. okay, if, INT, yep. if Yampi plays like that again, then I'd put INTZ. But like, I can't rely on him to do that every game. Surely he can't do that every time. It was so good. And I just, I'm, I'm, I'm wary that uh, INTZ is going to look only that good when you like Yampi is looking that good, you know? Because I did not like the look of, Ty and Ithusa from from week one. I thought Ty particularly was looking more cracked than rock solid. 
uh cracked in a bad way i guess to to keep the rock <laughs> metaphor and then ithusa looked kind of like a academy mid laner that wasn't really like activated yet i don't know i, I wasn't super enthused by them i don't know how you, how do you guys feel about the solo lanes from INTZ? because that's my worry right now is them yeah i mean <clears throat> i think i think you gotta give it time um yeah. i think i think you're gonna learn a lot about ithusa like when he goes against takui right i mean who were mm -hmm. the the mid laners he played well i guess, I guess to be fair he played he played against Grevthar and Piloto, two guys who are pilot now, I guess. Uh, yes. Two guys who are traditionally not lane dominant at all, right? And I mean, I think the team fighting separate from the lane dominance. If he like Tukui, I think he didn't he get a solo kill on Azir, maybe two early in uh, in, in week one. I seem to remember Tukui having a couple really good. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Solo kills Takui Azir remember, is, but... has always been. Yeah. his best yeah. i think and like by yeah and, and i think whether he gets that or not takui is an extremely experienced very good mid laner right the guy was third team all pro in the lcs say what mm -hmm. you want about the lcs but like that is yeah. you have to be you have to be legit to play there and he's played in the lfl which best tier two league in the world and look he, he we're gonna learn a lot about him i think against uh against takui and then against uh who's he got los grandes so against envy two Seven. two good laners Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I, I think I think Tay will be I think Tay will be fine. I think he he, yeah. he has his ups and downs. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not too worried because for me, I think INTZ always needed kind of that that extra step. INTZ always had a very high floor. It was just like in those crucial moments, right? Even like even Aoshi talked about this in in that interview he gave last last year to us, right? Like he was like, look, we're worried. Like what we're working on right now is like mental, because like when we have the when the stakes are off and like in scrims and stuff. We smash kids because we're playing with no, you know, no shackles on. But when we get into these crucial moments, those big team fights returns around Baron, that is when we step on ourselves. And that is when we don't believe in ourselves and we don't act mm -hmm. as one, right? And that's why I, I don't want to see Yampy on any more brand because I think Yampy <laughs> on engaged champions is just like that just I think that, that feels like it feeds a lot more into his strengths. There's so much right? value to and be so, gained by Yampy on engages. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. And then damage as well, just following up on that, right? If you can get whatever it is, like the rel whatever support, mm -hmm. honestly, combos, we've seen those be just across the world, right? Rel in the jungle. I mean, rel support, just her engages on top of other shenanigans uh, in the jungle support combo is is lethal. Yeah. I, I think I said on broadcast as well that like, Yampi, it, it's not the, that the brand pick's bad. It's not that Yampi can't play brand. It's that it, the, the fit's not good, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. put Yampi on something that can actually get in your face, get up in your grill. Yeah. And he always looks so much better. With the brand, it's like somebody else has to take that mantle of getting mm -hmm. up in your grill. And mm -hmm. sure, Damage is willing to do it. But I would argue that Damage does the most damage to his own team when you put him as primary engage. If you put mm -hmm. him as peel, that's when he really shines. That's why he looks so good with Trigo, because Trigo likes to sit back. And if yeah. Damage can sit back with him and peel for him, create that space, that's when they pop off. Same thing with Ninja Kiwi. Uh, to the Tay comment, though, it's funny because I historically have not been the biggest fan of Tay as a player mm -hmm. I, I think he's a little bit too <laughs> passive great champion breath not great champion yeah. depth mm -hmm. Faces a lot of things not amazingly this week one is actually probably i thought one of his stronger performances uh yes he didn't have a lot of impact but he was put on udir and i think anybody who got put on udir day one <laughs> i, I think that. that the the, the problem i had with the udir play was more in like team fight priority and like using the champion as you say i guess not that much depth it felt like he didn't have a great grasp on what he was supposed to be doing with this champion and was i felt like he was doing the wrong things like all the time you know what i mean and i was just to like where, though, just like where is time going at all, at all moments, did any of yeah. have any sort of team fight impact like <sighs> on day one I feel like there was one, but I can't recall. So like, let's probably say no. Not not memorably so, <laughs> I guess. Like, <laughs> yeah, even super clever to me. Like the team fight specialist was like struggling to have mm. impact on that Udyr once he left lane. Yeah. So the fact that apparently uh, apparently they're supposed to build him AP. That's what uh. Well, that's what they, I heard they were all LS going and and into about. full tank. Yeah, right? yeah, I agree. So yeah. the problem is that the build that he has been using, I think, at the LCK was full tank build. Mm. But teams were using him as sort of a lane nullifier, and then you just use him as just a, a body to create space in team fights. But the problem with CB Law is that a lot of our top laners either like to duel or be a team fight threat instead of just create space. So instead of like a and that's why I think last split we had so much problems with Cassante because Cassante kind of fits that that mold too, where you get to be a threat when you go all out. But 
most of the time you're just an absolute unit that sits there. Like FNB mm -hmm. likes to use him. Uh, Udir is like Kasante without the all out threat. So he just sits there, but he's got no threat on anybody. Yeah. And I think the problem CB Law tries to play him like Kasante doesn't work. You need Leandries if you want to do that. But mm -hmm. if you build Leandries, then you're a little bit squishy. So we saw a lot of Udir day one. Um, and I think everybody who got put on Udir kind of got trolled by the pick because they didn't know how to integrate it into pick. So yeah. that aside, Tay's day two on the Aatrox, I thought was. Uh, pretty pretty good, really influential, knew how to follow up really, really well. Mm. And even for Ithusa, I also want to highlight the fact that at least um, on day two, when he was put on the Oriana, they first picked B1 Oriana. Yeah, I remember because I was casting that game. And yeah, I you, you, like, you were not stoked what? about that. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like, okay, I understand Ori's strong right now, but I don't think she's B1. Like, there's Azir, yeah. there's Nico, uh, there's LeBlanc, there's Akali, if you want to, well, even Akali, I'm not super enthused for b1 but like at least those are better scaling options so considering ithusa got put in a rough spot by having the b1 that oriana mm -hmm. even though she technically doesn't have like a lot of terrible matchups yeah but yeah i thought ithusa did well uh not the best week one performance out of all the rookies mm -hmm. but well I, I thought i'm actually thinking back now i don't think any of the rookies had a bad showing actually for week i don't one. think no, so really. foo had a pop yeah. off kojima mm -hmm. did fine in both the games, I think. Um, Super Clever did mm. well. Makes yeah. did well as well, Makes honestly. In top play, yeah. Makes was like the best part of Liberty, yeah. I think, in, in week one. Yeah. So, I, th I think he, he literally won MVP that game. Yeah. yeah. On, week, on day one, yeah. So, yeah, yeah day one. Rookies, had a, yeah. rookies had a good week, for sure. Yeah. So, I guess maybe also, I'm, I'm a little solo I'm a little bummed that uh, you guys both referred to Ithusa with the adjective enthused, and none of you made an Ithused jokes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll be I'll be I'll be talking to you guys individually one on one. <laughs> yeah, we'll be hearing about I our about I yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, So yeah, maybe the solo lanes Ryan's are not put in a position to have huge impact or as much impact as they maybe could. Um, I guess if they get a chance, and like they didn't need to be the stars because yeah. Ninja Kiwi was popping off and Yappy was popping off, sure. But I guess um, I worry for the uh, longevity and the and how far they can go unless uh, until I see more. And I guess I that's not have to write them off. Mm -hmm. But I'm still waiting to see it from week one. We'll see how they, if they, right. if they, they shift over and if the meta puts some um, Ithusa and Tay in a different position. Um, okay, so shall we quickly touch on the blue side buff just to, to, to address the, the haters as well. And just quickly, so we got 10 blue side wins. We've already touched the fact that the 10 way tie in this, so it's probably just a coincidence, right? Is there anything to the fact that red side bot is now way more gankable that maybe is is causing the red side to suffer in the cb lol when bot lane is pretty important for us and like they're pretty tiltable as well our bot laners to be clear so like if you <laughs> gank some emotional lot, gamers <laughs> they're going to take some mental damage so like do you think there's anything to to the fact that red side is more exploitable on the bot side and i guess the top side as well being less exploitable or or, or wider just the general like opening up of top lane that can affect this for blue sides in the cb lol like given how we tend to succeed or are we just coping and it's just a coincidence i mean i'll ask a question am i am i missing something or like i mean because it's like oh it's, it's a lot more gankable isn't it now just mirrored to blue side because there there is a mirrored sort gank of, path yes. you know on on blue side that's like oh you are you know a stone's throw away mm -hmm. from the tower and you can yeah. gank from the opposing jungle and enter through the tri brush so isn't it just the same yeah um yeah kind of uh it, it is like and, and maybe there's something else that is you know unsymmetrical or unfair about the map then okay i'm, I'm fine with that but it's like it, the, the biggest gripe seems to be with that gank path right yeah so p part of the problem also is uh the fact that you're on red side you don't have side select which is why we're seeing really high ad prio mm -hmm. so things like lucian and calista are incredibly high priority because they're strong enough to dual push out uh, and sort of survive um, the the initial sort of early games and how things play out. So unfortunately for red side, it, having and part of it's also just the the players are not used to how exposed they are on the red I, side. I, I think that that's it more than anything. Mm. And, I, and if that's an excuse, okay, great, yeah. You, you, the, the map has looked a certain way for what thirteen years at this point. Like yeah, yeah. Well, the other problem is also what camps are up. So it's not perfectly symmetric mm. um, in terms of. Mm. Uh, how you can potentially actually no that's not true because yeah the, the things are flipped um wait so yeah groms versus yeah so because groms on on 
that side of the map versus yeah. Krugs on the other side. Yeah. It, it's how fast you can clear as well, right? Because mm. Krugs are traditionally the slowest camp to get cleared unless you're an AoE ganker, uh, AoE jungler, pardon me. If you're an AoE jungler, you're probably not the best ganker. Mm -hmm. So it becomes easier for AoE gankers to just kind of path that way, pick up romp down the bot side as Not well. to be annoying, but what about Amumu? Yeah, Amumu is probably like the one exception on that. And that's probably why we saw Melrang like, kind of mess think, around with it a little bit. Was it Aegis um, as well? Right. I pulled it out or? My, my, my Amumu main came yeah. out. Yeah, no, that, that's right. I think if, but then Amumu has other issues, which tends to be that like his damage. No, he does. Yeah, lower. like I said, I'm I'm just kind of being annoying yeah, yeah. here. Yeah, go go ahead. No, no, no. You, you, you were making yeah, a salient point. point. Yeah. yeah, it's a fair point. So I think the, all those factors right now roll into the into the bot lane. Red side mm -hmm. struggling a little bit with how exposed it is, and while yeah. top side blue side is also more exposed. Most top laners already have safety mechanics going yeah. to them. You, you don't see a lot of top laners mm -hmm. who are just horrifically exposed. Uh, one of them without a ton of mobility is probably Rumble right now, mm -hmm. which is meta. But it doesn't matter because Rumble just does so much damage, he's always winning the lane yeah. anyways. If you don't gank level 1 to 2, Rumble will just 1v2 you and walk away alive or burn flash and then survive till he can yeah. 1v2 you. Um, I think the other big thing that I've noticed is Baron. Mm. Baron is not symmetrical. Um, the new terrain mm -hmm. buffs, and I think we saw more all-seeing Barons than any other type of Barons this last weekend, mm -hmm. which was a problem. Because all seeing Baron has the worst walls for sure. red side to approach. Because blue side, you at least can walk in and there's that like a little bit of an opening for you to yeah. walk into. Red side doesn't have that. You've got to wrap around and those walls just keep pinning you into the worst possible positions yeah. for AoE choke points. So yeah, especially, I think in, especially in a rumble meta. Yeah. I think <laughs> yeah. the only game yeah. red side actually had the advantage on that was uh Kaboom Kate Stars, where Kaboom uh, where Kate Stars outranged Kaboom. And even then, they still ended up walking into the freaking Nico Rakan mm -hmm. and Baron. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yikes. Okay. Uh, my one last touch on this point uh, is how I want to get a prediction from both of you of how many blue side victories do you think? How long do you think the streak is going to go? <laughs> I, I think I could drop game one. Fluxer versus Kaboom. Yeah. Kaboom does, would be favored generally, I think, in that game. Yeah. RMC, do you think they're going to break it or do you think we're going to see this the, the blue side continue? To run on. So we, we entered our, our predictions this morning. So most of us, I think all three yeah. of us did. Um, as a bit, I put blue side win for everything. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Except for uh, pain on Sunday. So. Yeah. There you go. Pain has for my predictions, I'm hoping right? it continues. But realistically, I, I, I think it was a coincidence, mm -hmm. partially, that we had a full blue side win uh, yeah. on week one. So I, I don't think it's going to continue. Somebody's going to break it. Um, yeah. Looks like Kaboom. Let me just take a look here. Fluxu and Kaboom. Yeah, I think it I think it breaks in game one. I yeah, I think Fluxu kind of flipped out in week one with their yeah, matchups. So I we, think we'd have to assume right reasonably, like there's not really a I think but there's a non zero chance that Fluxu takes it, and obviously they've shown us they can step up, you know, punch a little bit above their weight. But uh and and, yeah. and Kaboom can certainly, you know, be a bit be a bit volatile, I think was our favorite word to describe them. Um but yeah. So we'll see. We'll see if it continues. We expect it to break, and we'll just have to have hold the record at ten, I suppose. Uh, but we shall see. Now we've talked about a lot of things that we liked from week one. Uh, let's talk about some things that we weren't so happy with that that did not land as 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 hard as we wanted, right? So I don't think there was anything that kind of that we've spoken about before in terms of like my my INTZ and stuff that that was kind of under expectations because I didn't have the highest expectations for some of these things, but. I think I've got an easy one, just like a super freebie, super easy. Titan Curry. Yep. What? 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 Like, I wasn't sold on them, but I thought we'd come in a little bit better than this, right? Surely. Yeah, I, I think I think especially considering the context, and there was that one, yeah. I think I was, was I with you? Or I, th I think I might have been with Hawk in games four and five. Yeah, no, it was, yep, it yep. was uh, yeah. Pain vs. Lad, where Titan just... Uh, he decided to hit E and Flash at the same time on Caitlyn and just kind of <laughs> like, yeah, like you know, lag spike. Like, you, ever, you, like, you guys remember that movie Jumper? I, yeah, I <laughs> yeah. My, or, yeah. He just like jumpered in place, yeah, and then um died. Yeah, that wasn't great. I, I think I think considering the context, considering like, oh no, I'm I'm literally not going to pain, right? I will not pay with play with Pro Delta, who some believe is a top three support in the CB lol. Yeah, unless I get my boy Kuri back. Mm. Yeah, and to be fair, I don't think Curry was the problem. <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> not really. Titan had his, his uh, he 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 uh, he made a Titan. 
Yeah, and, and I, it's even more worrying to me because remember that right now Titan is the second most experienced or second oldest AD carry in the league because mm-hmm. Mikhail's back. And yeah. I want to talk about Mikhail mm-hmm. after this. Yeah. But Titan has experience. Titans played on pain before. So you can't even say, oh, I got, I felt pressure being on such a big title roster. Bro, you won on red cannons. You used to play on pain gaming. You know what the pain, Z- the pain Zeta are like, right? Like we, yeah. mm-hmm. we're really intense, but Titan knows this. He should be used to it. So I don't know why he seems to be feeling nervous in week one. Uh, you talk about game two, forever. I'm going to talk about game one because mm. I joked that, you know, law of X's pain was paying alimony to red. Because that guy, Lamau. yeah, <laughs> that was just Dude, brutal. Like, it what was, was that three man diving the ball lane? No, there was, was zero good. setup. They were still pretty healthy, and yeah. Yo was just like, "No, we, we do this. We do this, guys. We have to do this." Like, no, no, you didn't. And then from there, the yeah. game just snowballed completely out of control. Yeah, that bot lane had issues. Uh, now, I do want to touch quickly on Mikau because, mm-hmm. guys, uh, Mikau, we used to joke that this guy, he'll carry your game, he'll into your game. Uh, want to guess who the kill, the death leaders are from week one? Oh no. Don't, I mean, as much as this lead has been buried, I'm not. I'm a little wary to say like Cavallo and Bacal, but <laughs> it is both of them. By the way, they're tied at six point five average depth. Ugh, yeah, yeah, together. So mm. this Liberty roster, Bacal to me was brought on. I feel like as that veteran presence to help mm-hmm. lead this team. Mikau is right now dragging down the team a little bit because Mix has been great. Drake Hero has been really solid. And I want to shout out Piloto because in the past we've joked about, uh, or Pilot, I guess, mm-hmm. we've joked about Pilot having the lowest deaths in the league. Mm. Um, actually, does he have currently the lowest deaths? I should double check. On this. the no, long, maybe, but no. Yeah, I know. Sayos beat him out. Um, but, well, quite a few people beat him. But Pilot's been really, really solid. The starting weeks, Pilot looked good. Mix looked good. Drake Hero was being Drake Hero. He was living up to the hype. Yeah. And then you've got Mikau and Cavallo doing Mikau and Cavallo things down there. Even in the win, Mikau went, I think, 6-6 six, six and... Did he go 6-6-6? Six, six, six? He went 6-6-6 six, six, six in their well, win man. over ITZ. <laughs> if that ain't a sign, I don't know, man. <laughs> also, real quick, I don't... Titan has not paid for playing before, has he? He has. Um, no. Which... Maybe I misremembered. Let me double check. It was just, it was just Kaboom and Red. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. My He's just used he to shouting play. at the the Penzettes from across the arena. So, yeah, 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 exactly. He watches okay, them yeah. abuse his opponents, and then is like, "Well, that seems grim. <laughs> I don't know why I'd go there." But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so th- we had some bot laners with some struggles. You know, we had some bot laners who popped off ultimately. Four uh, four. Do you have anything else that that didn't quite live up to your expectations this week? One, you don't have to give an answer um, as well. To be clear. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I, I guess, I guess, I was a little disappointed with, um, with, with, with Macau. I think that that's actually mm. a good shout. I'd kind of forgotten about that because I think I, I, I <laughs> well, all, all respect to Liberty. Until you show me something worth watching, I, yeah. I, I, I have very little time for this team right now. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, because like, I, I was always since like, they've been Liberty Vorax. <laughs> I, I was always down like, on yeah, Macau the- and high on Cavallo, and now I don't really even have a like to stand on because like Cavallo also <laughs> did not have the best week. So the, 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 the duo generally just didn't didn't come off the starting block looking so good so we'll see if the veteran bot lane can step it up from liberty and catch up to the like seventh place in academy rookie top laner who like uh <laughs> kind of made fools out of everybody uh and um, we'll see if liberty can do it and they did get that win they, they didn't have to wait like eight weeks for it or whatever um so mm-hmm. at, at the very least they're, I, th- they're... I think it was macau's first win in i think like a, a in 365 days <sighs> No, in CB Law. For CB Law win, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah cause he, he, he won Academy, let's not forget. He's one of the old yeah, solo yeah. G game, I imagine. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's tough, But man. maybe not. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how Liberty gets through, because that bottom of the table definitely... Fluxu and Lost definitely showed us something, I think, that we weren't maybe expecting. Yeah. Uh, we got, yep. definitely got a bit more from them. We'll see if Liberty can jump in as well. Uh, the one thing I want to ask for you guys now, just before we move on to a bit of meta discussion, is for an overreaction from week one having seen what we've seen <laughs> hell yeah what is now locked in in your brain in the run into playoffs what is your new prediction having seen the landscape of the cb lol huh. <laughs> should i give a meme one first while i actually y- think yes. about the proper one Yes, we won't. Sure, yeah, doomed, guys, it. we're screwed. Titan is losing every ball. <laughs> yeah, is pain. <laughs> pain fifth is gonna. It's gonna happen. Pain fifth is gonna happen, bro. I don't know about. We should have kept Pro Delta but, back. <laughs> I mean, I think that's a very normal, reasonable take to have for all the pain fans. Is where did prods go? 
Also, Titan's, uh, Titan's kid is really, really cute. <laughs> Tit Did not know he had a child. Do you say Titan's Yeah, I didn't know kid? either. And then all the pictures were coming out, yeah, of him uh, being yeah, he's, at, he's the adorable. at the arena. What an adorable <laughs> child. Oh, my goodness. That's crazy. Because I could, I could imagine <laughs> when I found out that Tuts was going to be a father in last split, I was like, okay, yeah, I could see that. Mm -hmm. But you say Titan as a child, I'm like, how? He's 12. <laughs> how does he have a child? <laughs> so I, I, that's crazy, man. Uh, and Titan's older than Tuts, I think, right? Yeah, he's 23 and Tuts is 21. 22 or 21? Yeah, 20, 22 bonkers. or 21, yeah. Well, congratulations yeah. to Titan at the very least. Um, he got fathered yeah. by Bronson and then fathered a child of his own. There you go. There it is! <laughs> too easy. Shots fired. Yeah. Um, oh, here's my overreaction, actually. Ninja Kiwi is the best AD carry in the league now. He just is. We've hey. arrived. We've arrived at the point where Ninja Kiwi is the best AD. It's been coming. He's been climbing. <laughs> and uh you know bronze has gotten to the top and is still showing us some some questionable mm -hmm. times titan as well the inconsistency is there but ninja kiwi doesn't really have that he's just he's just hitting he's just no, hitting every he week he is man. extremely consistent so yeah. i like that might be fine i don't know i i i, I kind of had a mental note of like man after a one and after a literal 10 way one in one week this is like the worst week for overreactions because usually it's just like, oh, take whatever team mid. is 2 yeah. or 0 2 <laughs> Everything yeah. is mid. And just like, just <laughs> say something silly after that. Um, I think, um, I mean, I don't know, my, my, my overreaction is I, that, I mean, I'm even, it's, I hasten to even call it an, an overreaction because this was my prediction at the start of the split. Red's winning the split. I, th I think this roster uh, will not mental boom. <laughs> I think uh, I going into business... Going into business with all of your friends, um, you know, is a great idea, um, and can never go wrong. And uh, no, they're going to be they're going to be just fine. The the Us Primus roster that uh, that was in CB Lol, it's them except for Gigo. Um, R.I.P. Gigo. He's not dead. And, He's just Titan, on Titan. Right? He's just on Titan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and Titan. Yeah. yeah. But um. But yeah. No. I, I think. I, Titan. Look. I, 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 I think they are going to <laughs> power a friendship their way to a CB Lowell title. I think they take down Loud in the semifinals and they beat Pain in the finals. I'd be down for that. I'd be down for a throwback. Get back to the, the days of Red Pain before Loud blew up and, yep. and just got in the middle of everything, you know? So RMC, okay. you sticking with Pain, Pain's rip and pip and it's all over and the Pain Zettis <laughs> are crying in the club? Is that what we're sticking with? No, no, that, that's just for the thumbnail, you know? We, we, we're not <laughs> yeah. here, so we got uh, to do something. We need to get a weeping. Um, Weeping minion. I, I think this... Okay, my overreaction is that this is going to be the most competitive split we have. I think we're going to see... Like, usually, you know, we've got, like, the sort of bottom two, three teams, and then, like, top two, three teams. Hmm. Uh, no, after week one, I think we're going to keep seeing a lot of ties. I think even our bottom... Like, the bottom teams are going to be taking games off a lot of people. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're tied for first now. We'll all be tied for first at the end. We're just going to be a <laughs> 10-way tie... <laughs> But we'll, we'll go up and down, but by the end, it'll all come full circle. We'll be flat across the board. And then I guess they have to test those new tiebreaker rules they added this season. Yes, <laughs> so, so, yeah, actually, what, what is the third no, rule? Because on the idea, it says three or more team ties obey the global standard for Riot. So that's just tiebreakers? Like, we play tiebreaker games? Tiebreaker... Because then you, I think then you, you, like, you, you seed them into like a bracket and then do tiebreaker games okay, after okay, Gauntlet, okay. I think. And that's... I think that's based if, on If, if it's like a multi-way tie... Yeah, but if it's a two-way yeah. tie, I think it would just be head-to-head -head first and then tiebreaker game second, right? Yeah, no, yeah. I, I'm thinking yeah. we're going to get more than just... Uh, we're definitely yeah. going to get three ways or more, is, is my yeah. overreaction so, take right now, so... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if uh, how how close we still are. Right, let's talk a little about, <laughs> about the meta. Let's talk about Season 14. We've touched on some parts of it, mm -hmm. um, but how are we feeling after a week of, of global competitive play, including the CB Law, about Season 14? Because it generally seems like people are pretty high on it. You know? Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, first of all, I want to applaud CB Lol. I feel like their learning abilities have increased significantly this mm. split. We stopped playing Udyr after one day. Congratulations, CB yeah. Lol. <laughs> yeah, three games in and uh, they're like, nah, okay, nah, 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 nah. Let's get the, get the backup pick out. Yeah, I, I hate that pick. I don't even know where it's coming like, from. Okay, I know where it's coming from. It's coming from the LCK. I don't know where the LCK got it from because I don't even think it's good. Like, sure, you can lane and then, and then what? Even if you built the Andres, other champions do it better. So yeah, that that particular piece of meta caught me off guard and I don't know where the what the that came from. Yeah. Um I mean I, I I've been having a blast <clears throat> with season 14. I've gotten um 
the 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 urge to play league with the fellas has not yeah. been higher in a long long time um hey, nice. so again yeah props to um yeah, props to Riot for that one. And I'm usually a person that is extremely averse to change. So mm. um, take that for what you will. I think that, that says a lot about how, how excited I am for this. Um, and the fact that, like, I, I really don't, like, usually, like, given how in the beginning of every season you have a couple just, like, insane clear OPs and, like, usually stuff is, like, I feel like, do you guys agree that this beginning of a season seems more balanced than other beginnings of seasons? Or is that just something I'm, like, making up? So... I... I want to say, yeah, you know, I'd agree with that because I think there are so many OPs that <laughs> you can't ban them yeah. all out, and therefore, yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe that's it. Yeah, if everyone's yeah. super, no one is. I, I feel like yeah. there's there's like a lots of really strong AP tops and Bruiser tops. Both have like really high like carry potential. I feel like mid obviously is just bursting with carry potential right now. Bot lane, I'm trying to think how if I think bot lane's actually weak or if they're just crying. And and they've just they're yeah, just, just not the main right. characters. Well, that's anymore. what they do. ADCs you know? have the emotional bandwidth of a potato. You see some of the damage <laughs> from like the lethality coming out in the mid game. You can see like Aphelios even when he gets like three or four items, he's still just like just tapping yeah. heads and just removing people from this plane of existence. So yeah, they die easier. Good, you know, it's good for them to learn a bit of humility. I mean, but the, like the they're still doing a lot. Two quadras in week one came from the AD carry role, and that yeah. most of the focus is still happening down the bot lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, ADCs are still strong, people. Like, <laughs> yeah, and we're still, in terms of, like, variety, like, we're, we're still seeing Lucian and Aphelios. We still don't have Zeri, which I'm counting as an absolute win. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we have, like, <laughs> yeah. we've got, like, Jin back, which is cool. I don't think we saw any MF, but, like, MF is performing well with these items. Yeah. Right? So... Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. think that Varus still matter. Yeah, I, I I think Varus as well is like just you just Varus is yeah. just perma good. I don't think there's a way for Varus to be weak at this point with so many patches yeah. ups and downs. He's always there, you know. And I'm and I'm okay with Varus always being good if it is still the case that like oh it's he's good because you can build him viably three different ways. Yeah, like, like, I think actual. I think that is it. That's great. Exactly. Yeah. Like if 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 those champions always show up in the meta, I want it to be because they are versatile, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, think I mean, he's only got a 25% win rate. He won one game this weekend. So. Yeah, true. So, like, I, I think it's cool that I like AD carries that have multiple build paths. I think it's boring when they're just, like, work out if you're going to buy yeah. Bloodthirster or LDR. <laughs> Whoa, crazy. And, like, uh, I think it's cool if you can have... If there's a way to make it maybe a bit... I mean, I don't know what you guys take on the lethality builds are. I personally don't mind them that much. I think it's just it's just power spikes in a different way, and like you just that's just yep. the trade off, right? You're just yep. good mid or you're good late. If mm -hmm. you go create lethality, it seems to make sense to me. I like that as an yep. option, right? And like the MF can do both mm -hmm. things, that Jin can do both yeah. things, that Ezreal can do multiple things, that all of these people almost can can do multiple things. I think that's cool, and I think that like that makes the AD carry pool even while it doesn't feel really wide, it feels like we're still seeing quite a small number of them. There's feels like they're very distinct. Feels like they're able to carry. They're also able to be blown up, and I think that's what they should be like. So, I I think the bot lane is fine, as in like, it feels like how it should feel like. And then the only maybe mm -hmm. problem is is that mid lane does do a bit too much damage, but you know. But even even then, like considering it's and I agree with you, but considering it's been it hasn't been like the carry position that it used to be, kind of when. In, in my anyway, yeah, like it was like AD to Blanc and Nico for like a whole full half year. Like it was not carrying, yeah. it was a utility role for like a long yeah, exactly. time. Exactly. Now, now that like Akali's fully back in the mid lane, like, mm. and yeah, like Oriana, like, you know, Cinder's not really back, but like, I, I like that you can have a traditional AP style yeah. carry in the mid lane with no bullshit. Um, I find that uh, refreshing. Yeah, yeah. I think the only sort of early game, well, a lot of the mid they mid laners right now are more skilling mages. I think the only early game one we've been seeing is Tristana, and mm. she's got 0% win rate. <laughs> uh, Akali, she's got a slightly earlier power spike because she's just overtuned with items, but even then, it's like mm -hmm. first item, level 6 sort of thing. So, yeah, yeah I, I like that we are starting to see a bit more damage creep back into the mid lane, and mm -hmm. I think it can be a carry role, but I think it's just more that people need to sort of... Like, like what I said in the beginning, I think teams are still sorting out how they want to play a little bit. Because yeah. we're so used to jungle mid being the facilitators for bot lane. We're still yeah. kind of in that mindset. So how do you feel about jungle? Because we, we like a lot of the other ones feel like they've got avenues to carry and to be utilitous. And that feels quite nice. And there's options and they feel quite balanced and strong. Mid lane, maybe a smidge too high, but you know. And then jungle, how do we feel about this role in terms of its versatility and its carry potential compared to... I hate 
Shin Tao. Get him out of here, man. He could take yeah. that spear and shove it up his Demacia. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, I just, hate, most, I just hate him. The most harsh I've ever heard RMC talk on anything like in the game. It's always very measured. It's reasoned. It's backed up by clear thought That's process so and statistical evidence. And then it's like, I hate Zin Zhao. Shove his sheer up his, I... up, up his behind. That's crazy, man. <laughs> That's crazy. No, it's just... I, I remember releasing Zhao. He's like incredibly broken. And... Okay, he's not as bad now, but I hate the way his ultimate just interacts with things. Like, mm. he doesn't feel that strong, and then he presses his ult, and then he just doesn't die, right? He's just got that dome, and all of a sudden, he just doesn't take damage. And now, of course, there's a clear mechanic to be inside the dome. But let's be honest, the range isn't that big on it. So a lot of range champions struggle to get in there. That's why I cheer every time I see Aphelios get in there and chainsaw him to death. Because it's <laughs> one of the few carries who can actually do that. And because of that, it just, it reminds me of um, old Maokai mm. with his old ultimate where he created that space around him where everybody yeah. takes reduced damage. That's Shin Zhao's ultimate to me. And I, I really hate watching it. It's just sick to watch. So um, not super happy about him. But besides him, I'm kind of happy. You can play almost anything you want in the jungle. The fact mm -hmm. that Brand's back in uh talia is viable mm -hmm. in the jungle as well uh we saw Jax from ages as well in the jungle i'm yeah. i'm also still not sure where that's coming from i feel like Jax is so much stronger in lane he can bully so much more but hey it's viable it works yeah. it's not bad mm -hmm. so yeah it felt like they were yeah, just think, really going for the flex yeah. power right they're like ah we can get the swap and Jax is Aegis can play Jax, so that's he can stun, he can jump in and stun, and that's probably it, right? And they're like, and now we get our counter yeah. in top lane was probably the most like ninety percent of that, <laughs> the Jax jungle yeah. call. Yeah, so I think jungle right now is uh, really, really wide open, and I'm pretty happy. We got to see quite a variety too. I think we had, mm. uh, let me just double check, twelve unique junglers. Um, Did we on week one? It felt like it was yeah. just Zin Vi every game. I need to go back and check. It, that. it felt like that. And then Zin definitely had oh, Rail as well. Like we still see yeah. a fair bit of Rail, right? That's still... Yeah. Because mm. because Rel can bust shields for void uh, grubs, which makes it real strong. Nocturne is yes. really strong with Nico still, mm -hmm. but we got to see the Amumu um, from mm. Melrang, uh, for for your champ. We saw mm -hmm. the Brand oh, from Yampi. I did not like that. We saw Talia come through as well. Uh, I can't remember who played that one. Um, and Viego, oh, yeah. Viego, I think is actually very very viable as I well. Was I was excited think for that. Yeah, Croc Croc whipping it out as well. Um, mm -hmm. I was excited till it actually got played, and then. Not just look drunk, but the <laughs> yeah. the the Viego I think is something that we might see more of because a lot of people are complaining there's damage overload right now, and with lethality being a thing, um, mm. I, I know over here in North America Academy or NACL we saw a misfortune Viego combo which was incredibly lethal mm. because mm. you run a lethality misfortune she cuts through everybody Viego just gets resets I think you can do that with misfortune I think you can do it with Jin I'd love to see that come through uh, as well but. Yeah, I think the, the field is wide open for junglers right now because every other role has options. So, yeah, you've got all sorts of combinations and every jungle becomes viable. Yeah, it, it does feel like we are getting a decent spread of, of like, pockets and, and outlier picks. That there, There's definitely, like, a two or three priors, like, across them, which isn't mm -hmm. too out of the ordinary. But it's maybe just a, a, a function of the kind of league and the kind of players that we have is that we have people with, like, we have the Zai Pike. We can, like, count on that coming out because he's a specialist at that. We've always got, like, a Draven player who yeah. can't wait to bust it out, you know? And we've got the Croc bringing the Viego out when no one else really wants to touch it. So I think we just have, we have interesting players that are happy to, to go for that special counter sometimes um, while the meta kind of forms in between them. So. No more Sedge Maokai, yay! <laughs> no, we've had yeah. one Sedge, one Maokai, <laughs> and, and a gentleman's, you know, single pick, and the rest of it is all more interesting things like Nocturne and Rel and stuff, so. Big fans. Big fans of that. So champion-wise, we're feeling good. Feeling good about the balance here. And uh, you said RMC that, like, the Barons feel a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit skewed, potentially, depending on which one you get. But in terms of, like, the multi-Barons and, and the way they've, like, buffed it up and made it harder to pick, I personally love that. I think it's nicer. And the I fact don't... that there's yeah. boss music now when you fight. Bear. Yeah, I really yeah. enjoy the like sort <laughs> of glitchy that. boss music. That's pretty cool. But yeah, I, I don't I like that. the idea of people sneaking barons and solo sneaking barons. I feel like that's not what it's for. That's <laughs> yep. not what the objective is yep. supposed to be. 100%. It should be hard. And like I remember, like when I was playing some games on the on fourteen point one B, like going to a baron with like three people and going, "Why am I still here? What we have like an eighty carry Adam in the jungle? Why am I still here? How have they respawned and they're already here? What is going on?" And it really does feel like you need to actually set it up and properly. Yes. You can't just, it's not as easy of just like, oh, we'll just start this and see what happens kind of kind of thing, which I love. I think that's a great change. Well, it is. And I believe there's a famous saying, uh, F around and find out. <laughs> you just <laughs> yeah. want to start bearing for fun. <laughs> 
Yeah, you know, we've got to test those limits, you know. We don't, we just need to find where they are. We worked, we worked out where they are, and now we need to find them again because they've gone and moved them, so... <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, quick question. I, I remember we got a lot of all-seeing barons, um, mm. and I remember some territorial barons. Did we get any hunting barons this weekend? I don't even know what I'm going to be honest does. with you. I, I still don't know the differences between the three. <laughs> I know so, what territorial and all the wrong are. guy. What does hunting baron right. do? Hunting baron is base baron, except that he calls down lightning now. Um... I think I've ever seen that in yeah. any game. Yeah. So the, the reason why like, I specifically am asking, actually, it's not because of what the Baron does. I'm going to be honest. I don't remember seeing like, I don't remember seeing the territorial like grabbing people. Mm. I know it's supposed to. I don't remember seeing that. It's, it's more the terrain changes that I'm yeah. interested in because it felt yeah. like most mm -hmm. of our matches, people were getting funneled into AOE choke points because of yeah, the actual wall that all seeing is the long boy, right? Where it puts you like in yes. a big corridor. And then That's hunting the puts the, the two entrances with a little terrain yep, in, just the one in the middle there yeah and then so is is hunting baron just same old pit just one entrance yep. and then it yep. drops drops lightning on you yeah i don't yeah, think when I you're ever saw that it'll, it'll do that's crazy yeah i don't remember that either so yeah i think for for me like the baron itself like having more health and, and doing a bit more damage definitely great like you guys mentioned to stop cheese from happening especially mm. solo takes but it's really the terrain that, that i've been fixated on for baron because mm. yeah that's he was like he has the most impact macro wise yeah. Yeah. Do you think that a Baron that opened up like some sort of pit or some sort of line into the pit from red side would be healthy for the game? Because it feels like one of those things like that's like, oh, for one of the forms. Yeah. That like, you know, to make it a little more balanced for red side, let's say. I'm probably oversimplifying it. And it seems like one of these things that would have massive unintended consequences. Um, but <laughs> little, yeah. little, little, little thought experiment, the I guess. Red side Baron, I guess, just is like the last yeah. one where it has like a back door. Because I guess the dragon never has that, right? And yeah. Yeah. Does that then make Baron, if that happens, if they just, maybe you just had like the Hunting Baron, you have normal one entrance on the front and one entrance on the back, and everyone can just like yeah. flow through it? Yeah. Yeah, I'd be super down for that. The The biggest problem, I think, with that is that Baron is closer to Red side already. So mm. if you open one up there, Red actually gets a pretty significant advantage on that one. Yeah. I, I would love them to just do it and then see the stats on it and just see how much it skews it. Because sure, like, yeah. I think there's a lot of things where we can say like, oh, it's very slightly, you know, it's closer to red or they have to walk further around to get it. And if you just remove that, I would love to know what the actual impact of that would be. Because I think it's very easy to go, this would break it. And I want to know how bad it would break it. Because it, it it's like, just like chop a little wall off. You didn't move anything. Nothing does any more damage. Didn't move any numbers. We just put a hole in the wall. No, worry, no worries. You know, I would love to yeah. see how much it would break. <laughs> just to... and if we're gonna do that i'd love for them to do it for infernal drake as well just yeah like, hey, yeah, yeah. it burns a hole in the wall yeah. yeah like and that's yeah. uh we should put it on the pbe and see what happens for two weeks that's that's my that's what i think we should do freak get it done. i'll be down for that yeah um, well, i guess he's on live pod he wouldn't he wouldn't know so whoever's on the pbe pod they get on it um okay so we're happy with season 14 we love what they're doing with that love what they're doing with the old game league of legends let's take a look at next week uh what we're going to be looking oh, wait, out for before here. we do there yes let's talk about grubs because i think we oh yeah didn't talk about void grubs didn't but talk about i grubs. think it's super impactful because that's cool I, we, there was only like what two or three games i think that one team actually got the void mites like five or more mm. grubs yeah there, there really weren't that many <clears throat> were testing it and i hard. love that yeah because i think the brazilians have figured that mm. out right like whoever gets those void mites it's completely bus busted i think it was the Furia Liberty game that they got Void Mites and Furia just ran with it. Like mm. watching them take turns was nasty and Liberty was just forced into so many tough decisions. But it's like, hey, if we contest Dragon here, we lose our entire base. They still yeah. went for it. They lost a lot of turns <laughs> because of those Void Mites. Yeah. But yeah, and the other thing too that uh, I kind of didn't touch on in broadcast, but I, I really want to talk about is Void Grubs give so much XP to junglers. Like when the junglers get the mm. Void Grubs, even if you're getting ganks on the other side, it doesn't feel worth it. It just feels like they get so far ahead. And even when like, they're behind early or the team is behind early, the jungler gets ahead from that and often feels like it equalizes the game and they bring it right back there because of the additional XP from Void Grubs. Yeah. All we need now mm. is a visual indicator on the screen. Please, please riot. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Show Excellent. us how many Grubs. Yeah. Please tell yeah. us. Uh, I think the the C vlog broadcast had one once they were all taken. It did like a three and three yep. or four and two or something little like scoreboard, this. yeah. But yeah, <laughs> just give us some give us some pips up next to the dragons so we can count them. Um, yes, please. But yes, I I love the fact that there is just something to play for on the other side of the map. Like from what is it minute, minute four, minute six, something like this. Um, minute five, it spawns uh, with dragon, and then four yep. minute respawn time after it gets taken. Yeah. So 
there's always something you can look for an objective that you can be trying to trying to trade or play for or do vision for or there's like there's so many options now for junglers i think to decide where they want to set up and what they want to pass to which is cool for them it gives them plenty of options um so uh oh i guess the only other thing to touch on is it's really crazy how bad everyone is at using the rift herald um it's it's really crazy it's hilarious how they can use it it's really <laughs> Such really a fan. crazy how Wait, tell me, are. tell me you've never played Scion without telling me you've never played Scion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just see, even just seeing the difference between like a jungler using it and they've clearly done it before, and they're like, okay, this is how I do it, and then like anyone else picks it up, and they're like, and then Whoa. when Root hopped into it, he just immediately crashed into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, man, oh, cut goodness. the guy some slack. He's new to Brazil, doesn't know which side of the road to drive on. You know, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's driving the wrong way though down the lane, not like the wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got a bigger issue, I think. Um, so yeah that was so we'll, i'm sure we'll get the hang of it and i think there probably is a couple of like spaghetti code moments where like you can look at like yeah. their mice from some players and they are still going the wrong way so there's probably a little bit of of uh, of blame to be taken off but uh, yeah i'm sure we'll get the hang of it so let's look at next week's games uh let's get this okay. one up so for week two uh i would like a match of the week from both of you uh to kick us off just I mean, scrolling it through kind of kind of feels like it's kaboom red i'm not seeing anything incredibly else compelling um uh, yeah i don't know intz's got a good opportunity to go 2-0 this week right against some um you know one bit of decent opposition anyway um, intz i think actually has a really like impactful important week for me deciding yeah. how i feel about them because that's both yeah, of the same. people Agreed. who I'm like, I guess if they could face Furia as well, then that would answer all my questions. But I, uh, <laughs> th these are like, I'm kind of close to adding loss into that and making it fifth to eighth, not fifth to seventh kind of bracket. Uh, and this is yep. going to be important. I mean, the red game, we'll see what they can do there. But yeah, against INTZ, I think like losses solo lanes look pretty solid. And INTZ ones haven't haven't shown us too much yet. So we'll, we'll see. Maybe INTZ could. Yeah, I bomb out <laughs> i think for me cage stars versus intc on day one mm. is the other one uh so kaboom mm. red cage stars versus intc cage stars they keep giving me hope man like i i'm yeah. trying so hard not to hype up this team like they are a dev team i know that they've said that but when i look at the roster and how it's performing they, you've got pro delta you've got giga you've got sounds like these guys are literally playoff contenders in the first place you yeah. bring in takui and okay i, I said before I, I don't think he was necessarily like, incredible by lcs standards but he did win second second and third team all pro mm -hmm. while he was there so obviously people disagree and coming into brazil i do expect him to be on the upper end of mid laners mm. and we saw that in that game one azir into corky that is a tough matchup corky outranges you it's supposed to be corky favored takui was making things happen yeah. man and smally too like smally's supposed to be the placeholder for mortius like i, mm. I kind of hate that coach steel was so obvious with that and has explicitly said that multiple times because i don't think it's fair to smally but Small is doing pretty well with Pro Delta as well. So, yeah. despite the fact it's a dev roster, they're looking too good. And yeah. it's making me that's, want to cheer for them. Want that's, to like, yeah. It's kind of like, so, so for Takui in week one, I think that the mid lane matchup, if they're going to be, if they're going to leave him room to, to try and flex and, and like dominate over them, then I think that is very big for VKS as a roster because Smiley and Pro Delta I think they're very solid. They're very reliable down there. They're not. They're not really mm -hmm. making a lot of mistakes, and that they'll kind of scale up nicely. Gigo can be a little volatile, but it depends on how they draft around him. Like if they let him pick Aurelia, you know what yeah. you're getting yourself in for. But like if you just give him Cassante <laughs> or Aatrox or something, he's probably going to be good, probably going to be fine. And then Desamus as well has shown some volatility in the past, but generally is is he's a competent jungler, right? For yeah. Takui. The Akali game I did not love at all. I didn't love the way he piloted it. I didn't love the way he did in lane with it. I think he suffered a lot in, in that game. And when he was on more sort of a comfort, or what feels like comfort, like Azir, I thought that was a lot better. So against Ithusa, I feel like there's maybe a lot more room for Takui to be comfortable, to get a lead, to try and be a playmaker, and to, to, to take over mid lane, which could be very big for that matchup. That's why I've predicted VKS over INTZ, though I did deliberate a lot over that. It's come down to the mid lane mm -hmm. matchup. It's a tough, one. It's a tough I think, one. I think Takui's got room to shine there. And uh, I think that might actually just be, that's kind of what I'm looking out for, is how is Takui actually standing up right now against some of our better mids versus our worst ones? Like, is he going to be able to exert dominance over the, the less experienced ones? And is he going to get kind of, if he, when he goes up to Tenons, when he goes up to um, Envy maybe, or 
I guess Grevthar is not a dominant laner, or Howes, I should say, really, right? Like, how is that? Because we saw that, I think. That was that was uh, the, the Akali game, was against Howes um, for Kaboom, and we just didn't see the same impact from yep. him. So I think I, I want to see where Takui is going to land, because I, I agree, I would have I would have expected him to be up in the, the upper echelons here, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure yet. You know, maybe I didn't give the Brazilian mids enough credit. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. I also want to see Pro Delta damage. I just like that matchup. We yeah. had it Yeah, that's, that's I feel like damage spice. had to shorten up the stick because Kate Star is like shafted that bot lane hard. Like the 3G network never. It's 3G, right? The coverage isn't great. So they never yeah. reached the bot lane. <laughs> yeah, um, they were on H plus then. It was grim. Yeah, now you've got Pro Delta and Smiley versus uh, Ninja Kiwi and damage. And Ninja Kiwi on a tear. Like I, I kind of want to see damage like pop off, get revenge a little bit. I yeah. love Pro Delta. He's my boy, but. The narrative would be funnier. <laughs> mm -hmm. damage won that. Yeah, for sure. So we're looking out for VKS a lot. Um, match of the week, potentially VKS INTZ, potentially. And then Red Kaboom yep. is, I think, like, just Kaboom has the potential to make, like, matches of the week out of any of their games, just because they're going to yeah. be kind of crazy. <laughs> um, and, like, I really loved Maorang on the Nocturne and, and Howl's on the Nico. That was, that was kind of that mid jungle duo I wanted to see in game two. Lonely's been he's been really solid. That's kind of what I expected from him. He's just he's getting on with it. You mm. know, there's a lot of ganks yeah. happening on both sides up there, and he's just he's he's present for all of it. Um, and I honestly haven't, I wasn't as enthused by Natuno Sales as I wanted to be. I think Sales had a bit of a quiet week one. He yeah. didn't die like ever because maybe he just wasn't on the screen. I don't know. But how do you guys feel yeah, about? It left a bit to be, yeah, it left a bit to be desired. Um, and at the end again, maybe oh, it's just yeah. because I. I, I had to kind of, I found myself kind of having to like check myself of like, okay, why did I think this was going to be kind of as crazy as it was? Mm. And I think it was just because I was just expecting immediately, oh, well, Natuno, he's like, you know, extremely plug and play. And Seos, he seems, yeah. he feels very plug yeah. and play. And we've seen both these dudes be the best in their roles, you know, at very, very recently within the last year for both these guys. And I think, yeah, it didn't hit immediately. And I'm like, mm, are we asking questions? No, like, uh, I, I think I was underwhelmed, but I, I don't know if I had the right to be like as underwhelmed or yeah. worried as I, I was. was whelmed. You know? By it, you know, I was well, I was positively well, exactly. I mean, yeah, I, I see where it's coming from, right? Like, I think of Natuno after that split on Los Grandes, and I was thinking, this guy must be pent up beyond belief, like, he needs to just <laughs> blow over that ball line. And yeah. then you pair up MVP Serios, like, I was expecting more. And then you picked Ooh. Draven, you yeah. raised my hopes, you picked yeah. Draven, and just absolutely nothing happened to that ball line. <laughs> it was kind of, yeah, it was okay, it was very quiet. <laughs> It wasn't. It wasn't what I wanted for them. You know, it wasn't what I dreamed yeah. of for the for the Kaboom bot lane debut. And you know, we've heard you know loose loose rumors about like scrims not going super great for Kaboom. So we'll see if maybe it's just taken a while to bed in. Yeah. I'm not surprised yeah. at all. It takes a while to gel a roster like this. There's a lot of different parts coming together. Uh, so we'll see. And then red, as we see, they're not flawless. I think they are very strong. I think they're the strongest, but. You know, yeah. they went late versus INTZ and, and they got caught out and then got caught again and lost. You know what I mean? Like, they got three Barons that game and lost. So, there's there's still holes there to, to poke through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To be fair, that was a rough composition as well mm -hmm. because Bruntsey had gone for the poke build, uh, the yeah. lethality build. So, as the game went on, like they kind of needed to just sit back and poke a little bit. But mm -hmm. um, INTZ just wasn't giving... And that's why I like Yampion and Engager. Because he was just running, racing at them, and even F and B, who's the absolute yeah. unit, um, they, they were hitting the point where the Zaya had skilled up and they could actually kill even mm -hmm. Asante. So, yeah, I, it doesn't excuse their early their mid game where they started throwing leads like crazy. Mm -hmm. But that they lost isn't it's not the biggest shock to me after seeing their draft. Let's put it that way. Yeah, sure. So we have VKS and INTZ and Red and Pain as candidates. I think I would I would probably go for VKS and INTZ just because I'm I want the data from that game. I really want the knowledge encased in that match uh, to to find out what we're looking at here. And then the rest of it, generally, we would have a, a pretty clear favorite going into a lot of them. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah, blue side, can... right? That's the favorite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So you know, <laughs> uh, uh, Fluxu going three one. Um, like it's just like you could. I could see Fluxu beating Kaboom without being that surprised. I could see them beating VKS without being that surprised. So we we can maybe get another look at, at where Fluxu actually is because we did see a bit of that. We're all super cracked. We're all playing pretty kind of fast and loose. And when we're all on the same page and we can get those mechanical outplays, we can win games. And we're not gonna you know mess about and throw leads. Like when we get a lead, we're gonna we're gonna try and win with it. But they could also just get kind of taken apart by a team that's a bit more organized yeah. than them. So just hands checked and yeah. 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 And I think they could 
just bowl over both Kaboom and VKS if the stars align in the right way for them. So I'll be keeping a close eye on them as well. And I just, I mean, it pains me to maybe see Liberty once again abandoned at the bottom against Loud and Pain, but I think that's probably what's going to happen. Yep. <laughs> and uh, uh, even Lolly Sports can't put them first at that point. So um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see uh, if, if Liberty can, so can, can get their engine running. So I think that's going to be about us. We've, we're about an hour, about an hour in. We've touched on all the weeks. It was a, once again, a unique week one. And we'll see what week two has in store for us. Season 14 going very well. Everyone's happy with it. And uh, RMC, as you said, the and if you're not, you're wrong. Close. <laughs> yeah, literally. If, you, if you're not enjoying it, go watch, like, <laughs> Hots. I don't know. Why are you here? Like, just... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and, and as RMC said, I think we're looking at a pretty evenly split CPL so far coming into this one. Everyone's got something to bring to the table, and that's what we love, right? That's how we build a strong region. So, thank you very much, everyone, for watching Gringo Slobberados for episode two. Uh, go and follow our socials as usual. That's at Cibolo underscore all in the English description. on Twitter. They'll all be in the description. Cibolo English on YouTube and TikTok and uh, Cibolo underscore English on Twitch. And come and join our community Discord where we are all active and chatting yeah. and theorizing and enjoying the games as well. So with that, have a wonderful rest of your evening and we will see you this weekend, Saturday and Sunday for more CBLOL. Bye.